so excited. I have here with me, I mean, you have to hear his story. Someone who is beyond incredible. Tucson King, who is the footwear designer for Jordan brand kids for Nike. Tucson, welcome to the HFR stage again. <laughs> Thank you for having me, everyone. We've had to speak at several of our summits, and he's so inspirational. And I think for you students and professors and HBCU alumni who are watching right now, his story will be so inspiring for you too. So Toussaint, let's just start with your journey to working at Nike, because that journey is so unique. Can you share the story of how you started? Yeah, so it's crazy. I kind of tell the story of uh, me working in a call center for retail credit cards and marketing and getting the opportunity, the invite through Holland's Fashion Row in order to um, send in a portfolio and actually compete or potentially compete in the combine. But it wasn't until I had a conversation a couple of days ago with a friend of mine and um, he's like, you know that this wasn't overnight. And I was like, yeah, I've been doing this for years. He's like, no, really think about it. He said, I've been around you for tens of years and watched you literally like sketch and design and try to figure out your craft night in and night out. You clock out and still stay sketching on your own personal stuff um, until, you know, the wee hours of the morning. So he's like, this is a long time coming in. People don't realize that you've been doing a lot of this behind closed doors without any credit, without any notoriety. And uh, he's like, finally, it's happened. But uh, yeah, it's crazy because I didn't go to design school by trade. Um, and I used to just sketch on my own because I love footwear. I've been, you know, in the culture since a kid. And um, yeah, I was, I was given an opportunity. So it's a big, you know, career shift from taking phone calls to now being a footwear designer for Nike. I love that you say that because you're like, I didn't just start this, right? Like it didn't just happen. Like, yes, I got the opportunity, but I was prepared. You were prepared for the opportunity because though you were not a designer for, you know, for a brand, you were still always designing. And I think there's something to say about that, right? Because sometimes we think people have to give us permission Right. Like I was thinking, oh, man, I want a documentary on HFR one time. And I'm like, you can start filming content now. The thing about where we are in this moment is that you don't need permission. You want to design shoes, start sketching. You want to create you want to be a movie maker, start making a movie on your phone. Right. Everything is available to us now. So let's talk about your dream job in college. Like what was that dream job for you in college? And did you ever think you'd be where you are now? Well, my dream job kind of started before college. Um, I wanted to be a professional basketball player. Like I loved and lived basketball. So when I finally got to college, um, I was transferring. I was actually attending uh, Southern University in New Orleans. It's a very small HBCU. Um, I was going to transfer from there to go play basketball at a JUCO in Montana. But Hurricane Katrina happened. And I ended up at Ohio State and trying to walk on to a nationally ranked program is a whole different monster. So it quite didn't work out for me. Um, so the pivot was, since I can't be a professional basketball player, maybe I should go to school for sports medicine and be a doctor. I would love to sit on the sidelines and, you know, help the players. Right. Um, but, you know, I was in a different state had to work. Um, I didn't believe in like taking financial aid to take and pay for my bills and all of that. Like I worked full-time uh, work study, full-time regular job, part-time job on the weekend and did freelance design work to make sure that my bills were paid. Um, but it's crazy because, you know, footwear design is something that I've always been passionate about. And I don't think that it's because I love tennis shoes so much. I think the purpose really came from wanting to help people. So um, after I got into the work field, I was, you know, honestly, I was tired of waking up every day feeling like I was wasting my life. I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. And it got to a point in my life where I said, what do I have to do 
in order to not only help other people, but get myself to a purposeful and happy space. So I was like, well, you know what? I need to become debt free. So I started working on paying off all of my bills, student loans, car, everything, because once I'm debt free, I now have the freedom to go and do anything that I want to. Um, and it was at the end of that journey where I had that opportunity to come and work for Nike. But if it wasn't this opportunity, I was on my way to China to figure it out. <laughs> wow. What were you, what, what did you want to do in China? Well, start, um, you know, going to factories and just trying to learn the process of footwear making because um, the passion comes from every time I go back home to New Orleans, I used to always see friends on the same corners, still living with their parents and nothing was moving. And I was like, well, let me take my passion for footwear design and use that in order to bring jobs back to my community. So that's the real reason why I wanted to do footwear design. And now that I'm here at Nike, I have the opportunity to use their platform to make that same impact on my community. I love that. Love that. Love it. How can students, um, how do you think students can get more involved with Nike? And are there any current opportunities? That's a great question. So I think the focus is finding what your purpose is and living in that purpose. If you're doing a great job at whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing, you don't have to go looking for Nike. Nike will come find you. Uh, so that's the first and foremost thing. Because too often I come across, you know, designers and other people who say, well, hey, I want to collaborate with Nike. I want to do something with Jordan Brand. I'm like, well, who doesn't? Like, what's your purpose? What's your reason? Because when they sit down and have a conversation with you, they want a genuine and clear story. They want to like help enhance what it is that you are and you know what you do. Uh, so you have to have a clear vision of that. If you don't, it's going to be hard to have a big brand back you on anything. And um, I'm sorry, what was the second part of that? That was no, that was good though. <laughs> that was good because when Harlem, when we came, when HFR came into Nike, one of the things um, we did was told our real story. And I was like, we're going to tell our real story. We're, we're going to not trying to be more than what we are. We're going to go in this door, be who we are, and they either take us or leave us, right? And that meant that me going in the door, I end up crying at the table, which I had no plans to do. Um, but that's genuinely who I am. And when, you know, they heard our stories, that's when that collaboration that we did with um, LeBron James 16 shoe got bigger and bigger and bigger. It was because they were like, oh no, not HFR is real and the designer's are real too. Like this is what they're meant to be doing. And you pull all that authenticity together and you don't have to make up a story. Like there's too many stories there to tell. You got to figure out which story to tell, right? That is true. So, and I thank you because you were the one who got me connected to um, the whole LeBron team. And um, what it was is I was in between the Serena project and I just took the initiative to reach out and say, hey, you know, do you all have any extra work? And I was asked to do the Black History Month for LeBron um, this past year. But instead of giving them one concept, I came back with two. And the second concept, they was like, well, we need to find a way to get this idea made as well. So at that time, it was in a process of negotiating the deals with FAMU. And they came back and said, hey, the second concept, we need you to make it to a FAMU shoe. I was like, all right, no problem. So when I came back to them with like the color, the reason why I changed it a little bit, the graphics that I did, the hidden messages in it that people still don't know about, um, just the whole build out, the reason of the story, they were kind of blown back because, or blown away because they thought that I was just gonna put a regular color on the shoe and give it back because that's really the process for PEs. It's just color blocking and pass it on. Um, so, I had a conversation after doing that project. I spoke with Tinker Hatfield and he said, I think that you need to align yourself with the team or, you know, an athlete and go through the whole journey with them. So I reached back out to the LeBron team and said, hey, I want to be responsible for this. And, you know, they crossed their T's, dotted their I's and said, hey, you got it. So I'll be doing all of the fam UPEs moving forward. And also had the opportunity to design the men's and women's basketball uniforms for this upcoming season. 
And the reason why I wanted to do it because I felt that if I didn't do it, I'm not going to say that. I felt like I was the one to do it the right way. Of course, because you went to an HBCU, right, in New Orleans. You understood, you get it. You wanted to make sure that you, I love that. And it makes sense that someone who, you know, even went to an HBCU at some point would be the one to design the shoe for FAMU. I love that. And the products for FAMU. I love it. Yeah, yes, I thank you. And I thank the whole LeBron team, um, Josh, Tim Day, uh, Jason, I mean, they've been amazing and been supporting me, uh, Whitney, Eddie, uh, to support me with the project. So much thanks and love to them. I love it. So if you had to leave the students with like one piece of advice to son, like something you wish you had known, what would it be? I wish that a little bit earlier in life, I had a more, more of a sense of self-accountability. Um, quick story, um, I was playing semi-pro football and I decided to go and play flag football on the weekends. And I'm standing on the sideline the whole time and I'm starting to get frustrated because like, hey, I know how to run my routes. I'm pretty good. Why am I standing on the sideline? And the coach, he came to me and he said, um, why are you upset? I said, because I'm standing on the sideline. It's been three weeks. I haven't gotten any playing time. And he said, all right. He's like, do you know all of the plays? I said, I know most of them. He said, oh, you know most of the plays, but you don't know all of them. I said, interesting. He said, when you go to an ATM machine, what do you need in order to get money out? Took me a second to think about it, but I was like, your debit card. He's like, oh, you need your debit card. He said, okay. He said, well, how can you come to an ATM machine without your debit card and expect them to get money out? It's like, it doesn't make sense. He's like, you're upset because you're on the sideline and you don't even know all of the plays. You don't even have the fundamental things that you need or knowledge that you need to even get on the field. So the thing that I would say with people is self-accountability, continue to educate yourself because when that opportunity comes up, if you don't have the bare minimum and the fundamentals taken care of, then the opportunity can pass you by and you're gonna miss out. So hold yourself accountable, educate yourself, make sure that you have all of the tools and most of the tools that you need that you can gather on your own in order to succeed when that opportunity comes. Mic drop moment. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> Mic drop. And here is the thing. Everything you need, you can get. There's a book for it. There's a podcast for it. There's a YouTube video for it. Everything, it's, all the information is out there. You can literally go learn from the best. Yes. You can go learn from, from, from the founder of Nike. He has a book. You can go learn from the founder of Google. He has a book. You can go learn from the founder. You, everything's out there. So there are no excuses. I love that. Toussaint, perfection. Thank you so much to you and to the Nike team for speaking at this um. HBCU Fashion Summit, our very first, and we hope that you'll come back. <laughs> uh, definitely. Thank you for having me. Good luck, everybody. Um, and as Brandis knows, um, I'm into mentorship work. Quite a few people from HFR have come my way. And um, if you feel free, reach out to me as a resource. I'd be happy to connect with each and everyone. Thank you so much, Tucson. Thank you.